Hi guys, uh, where does one start with this? I don't know because we have just seen everything I think I've ever wanted to see in my life within the span of about six minutes. Uh, let's break down this new Pikmin 4 trailer. I cannot even know, like, I cannot even, I'm, I was shaken slightly earlier. I am so overloaded with information right now. I don't know what to say, so we're about to break down this trailer, I'm about to tell you every single thing I find, potentially come up with some little theories, some little bit of speculation, and let's see what we can come up with. So our first really new shot, we see Peckish Aristocrabs, that's right, I predicted it, this baby Peckish Aristocrabs, what does that mean? Rock Pikmin are back, so they're most likely going to be able to break their claws, as I suspected, it was just a redesign, the new colours by the looks of it. There's also new water hazards, similar to the fire geysers from Pikmin 2, it looks as if blue Pikmin are going to be able to take these out, so more Pikmin can walk through, so that's another reason why blue Pikmin are more useful in this game. Potentially Ice Pikmin could also freeze them, but I think Blue Pikmin will be the counter to these gushers. Next shot, we see a Mammoth. I didn't expect to see this guy again, but you can see his individual hairs. I absolutely love it. Next shot, we see an underwater segment, very deep water. Blue Pikmin are indeed going to be quite useful here. We see Puckering Blinners return, one of the ones I very much expected to see back. And some new Pufferfish enemy, which I absolutely love. Next shot is inside the house which we saw yesterday, we see this new elephant kind of avocado looking enemy, I really enjoy him. It kind of has like a caterpillar nose. We also see a stove that is on in the background, meaning that humans might be around, which I don't really like too much. I hope there's no humans in this game. But this also will serve as a hazard for red Pikmin, so you can have your red Pikmin cross a human stove in Pikmin 4. What even is this anymore? We see Colin on the floor, he's most likely a castaway collectible as the way his antenna is blinking. We probably get him at the start of the game as early on we do seem to see, bo see both Colin and Shepard. It seems as if these are unique castaways, there's probably more, probably most likely more unique castaways we can find throughout the game like the bold guy. We see a new shot of the Rescue Corp ship, this is most likely the first time we see it as some sort of cutscene to introduce us to it and you can see that it is heavily smoking as if it's recently crashed. I doubt it's recently crashed, I think this is just an indicator that it is indeed busted and we need to fix it. We also see that Ochi has cute little interactions and animations that I absolutely have fallen in love with. I love Ochi so damn much. We then see that the game will have a bit of guidelines to start with as the map is very big. We see these kind of spirity little blue particles and it seems as if Ochi will also try and lead us in the way of these, which is very nice and it will be great for new players coming to pick them for the first time. In our next shot, we finally see the HUD. We see the day timer, the Pikmin counter, and the health bars. They have all been completely redesigned, and let's just say, they look definitely a lot different, but I'm going to be honest, I'm really enjoying them. They look pretty great. And we can see that Ochi indeed does have a health bar, so poor old Ochi can get hurt and die, potentially. On top of this, we finally see gameplay of the whistle. Believe it or not, we haven't seen the whistle at all yet, so it's good to know that it's back. It was very obviously, it was very obvious that it was gonna come back, but it's nice to finally see it in action, and it looks pretty good. Next thing we see is these blue crystals finally being collected, and we have found out that this is indeed Sparklium from Hey Pikmin. As I suspected, it looks as if these will not be used to get Ice Pikmin, but potentially they could be. But these are carried back to the ship and used for upgrades. You're going to have some sort of like skill tree for this game, which is insane. We see a beautiful new Ochi, seemingly idle animation, where he sneezes and scares all the Pikmin. And it's just so cute. Oh my god, I cannot wait to see what else Ochi has in store for us. This game is so cutesy and I absolutely love it. We can see the clock treasure has been knocked down from the fence somehow. We're not sure how. Perhaps it was somehow Ochi jumping or something. And he has the carry power of three when he is small by the looks of it. And now we truly enter the house. Okay, uh... <laughs> Vertical levels in Pikmin by the looks of it. I don't know what to say. We can see a treasure on the stool down at the bottom We can see these pots that Ochi smashes and behind them There is just kind of a pathway along everything a sponge perhaps we'll be able to use the sponge somehow Over on the other side we see some strange cactus and what looks like a little orange then in the sink We can also see a tomato this stage seems incredibly vertical And I cannot wait to see how it will clash of all the different Pikmin types like winged Pikmin as we also do have Confirmation that all Pikmin types are in story mode and you guys will see that in just a bit. 
In our next shot, we finally get a good look at the desert stage, and we see a toady bloister on the surface. We see skeeter skates in the back, and we see what seemingly is a hermit crawmad's little nest there. So that is three returning enemies in one shot. They all have their Pikmin 3 designs. By the looks of it, it's very nice to see. Then we see there's a massive sandcastle in the middle. Looks as if there's a little jungle forest behind the entire desert place. So this is most likely actually the beach, which is even better because that means we can have a bunch of sandy areas on top of having a bunch of watery areas, just as I predicted. We also learn a bit more about Ochi's abilities. He has every ability you could ever imagine, basically. He can even attack bulb orbs, although he can be damaged. So I really don't want to make him attack a bulb orb and then end up him being mauled by the bulb. That sounds like a horrible way to go out, poor little Ochi. Come on, Ochi, get him. Also from this gameplay, I can't tell if the bulb orb actually has its kind of eye weakness back from Pikmin 3. It's kind of unclear. Next, we see a damn Game Boy in this game. That's right, product placement is coming back. It looks as if it is only going to be Nintendo products though, but I am so cool with that. I can't wait to collect a bunch of cool Nintendo products in this game. It's going to be so damn awesome to see what we can find. It seems as if there is a very large amount of treasures in this game, so I can't wait to see what we get. Another beautiful shot of the desert area. Also solidifying my point that this could be a beach area. We see a massive kind of rock pool. We see golden nuggets from Pikmin 3 Mission Mode. It seems as if these will be in the main story. Everything is going to be in this main story. I'm so happy. In the background, we also see the pearly clam clam from Pikmin 1. Who saw this guy returning? Not me. That's so cool to see. More in-house shots based on the placement of everything. It looks as if we're going to be able to explore almost every single inch of this house. And we see the armored cannon beetle boss from Pikmin 1. Didn't see this guy coming back. I thought he was forever gone and replaced by his lava counterparts. We also see a remote on the table. This is very similar to the ones we find in Pikmin 3 Mission Mode. You can probably use this to change the way this floating platform is going to get your Pikmin across to other furniture. Oh my god, there's so much going on. Is this even Pikmin anymore? And now it's the moment I've been waiting for. It's cave time, baby! Seems as if the anim animation also mimics the one in Pikmin 2 where the captain jumps in first, then Ochi, then the Pikmin, similar to how it would go Olimar, Louis, then the Pikmin. Our first shot of the caves, we see a hell of a lot going on. We see that fire geysers have been reworked to have a lot more of a bigger radius and some metal bars which potentially will only close when all enemies are defeated. Next up, we see a very puzzle-based cave with a bunch of conveyors and bouncy mushrooms and a bunch of stuff we've seen from previous Pikmin games. It seems to be very inspired by the Clockwork Chasm from Pikmin Freeze Mission Mode. This is also most likely the cave in which we go through to find raving longlegs down at the bottom. Next up, we see a whole ass like exhibit aquarium kind of thing with a massive Wollywog. What is going on? Where is this? Is this another new map? How the hell did we get here? Why is this Wollywog so big? I have so many questions. I'm actually so surprised this also seems to be the place in which we get the castaway from screenshots we saw previously and in fact i think we might see an emperor bulblax in the background here it looks as if his little eye stalks are poking out of the ground dusk pustules are back and this time they are carried as a group instead of individually which is pretty cool there's also these fan things i'm going to assume we can use these to get around the caves we see a cobweb hazard perhaps this means arachnodes are back and there's a new treasure there we then see these recurring massive blue blueberry things i don't know what these are they're super weird but they seem to be in many areas i don't think we really have explanation to this perhaps they are something along the lines of sparkly and still next shot is very weird we see olimar with some sort of pikmin mask on i don't think this is olimar turned into a pikmin i think he's just kind of gone wild and decided to dress as a pikmin for some reason perhaps he can be cured perhaps he can be helped guess we'll have to find out. His leaf does look a bit plastic there. I don't know if that's just because of the way the game is or if it, as if this is literally just a fake Pikmin. He's with his evil Ochi here and they grab a castaway for some reason and jump into this specially coloured cave. It has an orange lid instead of a blue lid. We also see that evil Ochi for some reason has a leaf on his tail. What does this mean? Is this technically a Bulbman? What is going on? And then we see gameplay that jumps straight into two-player battle. Is this part of the story mode? Because... This seems very lore relevant, but then we just kind of go into two-player battle. There also seems to be sunset oranges in the middle. I think that's what they're called. I'm not sure. The insect condo returns, which is always nice to see. It also seems as if wherever this is, this also takes place inside of the house by the looks of it, or perhaps a different house. And then, oh boy, we see 
A lot of captains. I don't even know where to start. We're still kind of unsure on who any of these are. We see Colin, Pom, Terence, and Shepard, or at least that's their names based on leaks. We know Colin and Shepard for certain. But Bold Guy and our character, there you go, I'll refer to them as that. We see some guy in blue back at the back. Possibly meaning that he has some importance as he has a different coloured suit. This small cutscene also fades into gameplay, but the thing is the ship pod has already landed here, so I wonder if there's an option to sleep inside of the massive shuttle or sleep inside the ship pod every day. And then we get a whole ass list of abilities that Ochi can do. Oh my god. And this is what Sparklim is used for. You can use it to pay for upgrades on certain stuff and these weird little Ochi points also. We can finally also jump in Pikmin with the with the abilities of Ochi. Now that they have the freedom of all these Ochi abilities, I think that Nintendo definitely knows what they are doing of all these more open and vertical areas. I cannot wait to see all the different stuff they have pulled off in caves and everywhere. And we also see a bunch of sparkly points we can use for all these different abilities which we would normally get from killing bosses like in Pikmin 2. Perhaps that's also a way to gain these abilities, but is it, it seems as if we can buy them with Sparklium, which is very nice. We then get introduced to a new captain, this guy being called Yanni, having some really weird mushroom kind of haircut. Ochi seems a bit freaked out by him. And now it's night mode time, baby. Are you ready? Because Wigwaman was right all along. It looks as if these small little guys underneath this shelf were indeed tree bobs. These are baby bulb bobs that are still maturing and it seems as if they come out at night. I was actually correct in thinking this. These guys are also savage with their evil red eyes. So it seems as if it's not just bulb bobs that this happens to. And then here we are. My beloved Glow Pikmin. I didn't think it was going to happen, but we got a night mode exclusive Pikmin. We got our green Pikmin, he's finally here, and he is the most beautiful Pikmin I think I've ever seen. These guys are incredibly unique, and I cannot believe these dropped in the trailer. I absolutely lost it. I told you! Night Mode Pikmin! Oh, oh. Seems as if Night Mode will be some sort of tower defense, as I speculated in some of my previous videos. But instead of defending our ship, it seems as if we defend the Glow Pikmin's home. And these guys are like some crazy overpowered version of winged Pikmin. They just fly around, teleport into massive balls and phase through stuff. This game is so insane. I did not expect this much, this much uniqueness in a single Pikmin. They also have unique flowers for the first time in official Pikmin game, unless you count Pikmin Bloom. We have finally seen Pikmin have different shaped flowers. We get a look at a mini map, very reminiscent of the one we see in Pikmin 3. Puffy blogs are back looking exactly how they looked in Pikmin 3 with beautiful jiggle physics, and then they get absolutely annihilated by a glow Pikmin orb, and then they charge him and one hit him, just like Wing Pikmin. What is going on? What is this? Oh my god. Night mode looks absolutely crazy. After this, we get a few beautiful shots of just some areas we've already seen. I've got to say, this game looks just so beautiful. I cannot wait to explore these massive lands. We see purple Pikmin confirmed for story mode. Winged Pikmin on the back of Ochi as we fly across the living room. We also see the burgeoning spider warts are growing on the staircase for some reason. Looks as if the little star bits we have been seeing in night mode are collected by the, the glow Pikmin to potentially make more glow Pikmin to attack more enemies to get more sparkly and things. Then we see a new scorpion boss. This guy looks absolutely insane. We then see our first ice boss. It's some weird moth that has a face similar to the Scornets. And it also seems to take place in a very in a very similar sub-level. Looks very much like it is straight out of the shower room from Pikmin 2. It looks as if we will have this cave unit kind of style returning. I can't wait. On top of that, we see our beautiful rock Pikmin in our squad, and all of our Pikmin get absolutely frozen. Now, we don't actually know if this freeze insta-kills Pikmin. If it does, then this person is very much in for a Pikmin extinction. But we're unsure right now. I'm guessing it is effect you can revert, except you won't be able to use your Pikmin for a short amount of time. Bridges work very much the same as they do in Pikmin 3, except now when you get all the tiles, they actually kind of merge into just a fully plain sand bridge, which actually looks pretty nice. We then get full confirmation that Winged and White Pikmin are in story mode, and it brings a tear to my eye. 
Rock Pikmin are indeed back, like I said, and they also do break that crystal wall that we do see in the Empress Bulblax Arena in the ga first gameplay trailer. I was right all along. We see more of this weird gooey blue gel stuff, and we also see another little close-up look of my friend Pearly Clown Clown. And with that, our first trailer is concluded. And on the floor, it seems as if we see the aftermath of Mittites. Poor guys. But there we go. That is our Pikmin 4 trailer. Now, let's move on to more exciting news. So our next small analysis is Pikmin 1 and 2 on the Switch. Yep, literally today, Pikmin 1 and 2 are on the Switch. I'm just going to go over what has been clearly upscaled. It seems as if all the models remain the same. It seems as if they have polished up some of the gameplay though, which is great because I'm going to be honest, I don't like the way Pikmin 1 controls. But it looks as if here it's a lot more responsive as the Pikmin get whistled kind of instantly compared to just kind of messing around and not always getting whistled properly. This game looks absolutely great. It looks as if all the UI and icons are also upscaled. It's so nice to see these little guys in HD. Branded treasures are unfortunately being redone in Pikmin 2, but it's also kind of cool because now we get to see these treasures we've always seen as something else, as something new. We're basically getting more Pikmin 2 content basically 20 years down the line, which I think is really funny. And we can also find some small details over on some of the websites. Here it says the Rescue Corp ship is referred to as the SS Shepherd, named after Shepherd, meaning that Shepherd is most likely our captain, which is pretty cool. See a few more screenshots of caves, but nothing we haven't really seen already from this major massive trailer. We can see that these blue crystals are indeed referred to as Sparklium. There is indeed a Sparklium counter up in the top right as well, mostly all the time by the looks of it, so we can actually see how much potentially in the area we have collected, so you know when you've actually completed the area. Seems as if I was right with Ochi also being able to pull these little plant things by himself, this is most likely how we get out of this first tutorial area. These are indeed origami bird treasures, people were right on that in my comments. And it seems as if our main mission is to collect a certain amount of Sparklium, which will probably allow us to access more new areas. Some beautiful little renders of the Pikmin across this website. There's also a few little menus here where we can actually see stuff. It looks as if you can use Sparklium to potentially build these landing sites. It's something a lot of people were thinking, so it's super cool to have this. Actually, as a thing, I can't wait to see how this goes down. We see a new treasure here, the Bagel Treasure. This seems as if it's in some sort of challenge mode by the looks of it. There are a few co-op modes, sadly not online, so I don't really care too much because I know that nobody I know in real life actually cares about Pikmin really. And here we have a link to a bunch more Pikmin stuff like the Pikmin Shorts movies, a Pikmin manga apparently, that's cool. And I believe that was everything. Oh wow, we have so much today. I probably missed a lot because that's always what happens with these trailers. Everyone's going to miss stuff because there is way too much to look at. I'm so happy I predicted so much stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys are ready for Pikmin 4 because I sure am. Subscribe to see everything Pikmin coming up these past these next few weeks. I am so ready for this game and I hope you guys are too. Like the video and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Massive thank you to my two Patreons, Tentacles and Gun at the Hunt. You guys are the best.